Hello everybody, welcome to The Race's YouTube channel. My name is Scott Mitchell. For those of you who only recognise me as a disembodied voice on The Race's YouTube channel, this is what I look like. And this is my Stockholm apartment. You might recognise it from FAA Formula One press conferences and clips on social media. Now the reason for seeing this, the reason for seeing all of this, and the reason for doing this, which some of you will have already realised is a little bit different to what we normally do, is because we've got something really cool to share with you this time. We've been absolutely blown away by the support on our YouTube channel and the community we've built around it. So we've got our hands on something super cool and we're delighted to be able to share it with you. Now this is a special delivery that I've received from Thrustmaster and you might have already worked it out from the YouTube thumbnail and the description, but here is here's another little teaser for you. Now I do a little bit of sim racing, but nothing that's ever sort of contained gear like this. So this is a little bit of an upgrade for me that I need to, I need to set up. As you can see, you've got quite a lot. So I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna crack on with that right now. Now, everything is in position. I've got my trusty play seat set up. I've got my tower of goodies, but I need to get into the base stuff, build my nice little setup that I'm gonna bolt this add on to. But we don't wanna watch that, we wanna get straight in. To, to, to the good stuff. So with a little bit of help from my magic assistant, we're just gonna speed that up now. Beautiful, there we go, that was easy. Much quicker than it actually happened in, in reality. So, we've got it. Now it's time to get stuck into this. I'm super excited, I'm not wasting any more time. Let's get to it. Okay, now, full disclosure, Frostmaster haven't paid us to do this. They have sent this and helped me upgrade my, my equipment. So, so they have played uh, obviously a big part in, in this video being possible to, to share with you guys, but I promise you any enthusiasm or anything like that in this video is 100% genuine. I have been waiting to tear into this for so long. How can you not lose your mind with excitement over something like this? This is the Thrustmaster Formula Wheel add-on Ferrari SF1000 edition. They're only launching a thousand of these in Europe to kick things off. It is fully licensed by Ferrari, done in collaboration between Thrustmaster and Ferrari to painstakingly recreate the 2020 Ferrari Formula One cars steering wheel. Even as I say that out loud, that sounds ridiculous. And as you can see from the uh, images, all of the, uh, all of the buttons, all of the rotary switches, um, and a uh, fully integrated LED, uh, LCD display as well. So, this is just crazy um, to actually have my hands on a piece of equipment like this. Now I just need to work out how to reveal it without breaking it, because this is terrible. I'm just gonna, just gonna have a sneak. It's ridiculously cool. I, I don't want to do. His box. I've already put. I've, I've already opened it because I was terrified that I was just going to send it flying across the room. Teasy little reveal. How about that? Look at this bit of gear. Absolutely incredible. Now it comes with a little sticker with the. Um, the message uh, about getting involved and obviously the tagline own the race um i will need to consult with my bosses just to see if you actually own us the race yeah i think we need to get this bad boy out and look at it so <laughs> here we go how about that this is amazing uh, all the detail you can see. I think you probably might have seen on the, the social media teasers that they've done. I hope that nobody's forgot to attach the drink. Um, but yeah, so all of the buttons, uh, all the uh, switches, um, all completely integratable. And then you've got the display here. So you've got the, the revs on the top and you've got the lights on the side which uh, correspond to like Marshall flags, a yellow flag, blue flag if you're like me and you're probably going to get lapped um, and all of this is um, can be in integrated into the official F1 game which I am going to get cracking on with pretty soon um, so holding this in my hand 
first of all, I'm struck by how small it is. Um, all the buttons are, yeah, that's that's mad. Like, I don't know, I, I expected it to be bigger, but it is a one-one scale. Now on the back, you can see here, this bit's empty. This is what comes with the, um, the, the wheel add-on um, itself, obviously. This, when you're fully connected, this is for the gears. You've got clutch paddles down here as well, which I think is uh, uh, amazing. Um, but this is uh, this can be replaced. There's a there's something that they they, they sell separately for this. Uh, the T Chrono paddles, um, which are fully aluminium and they're basically fancier. Um, they've got like a crazy low bounce rate. Again, we'll put that here somewhere. Um, and it's just about finding marginal gains, which is what all this is about. Because although this is obviously very clearly a Damn cool collector's item. It's also meant to be a performance enhancing sim racing uh, equipment. Um, so I, I, I could look at it all day. I, I might end up mount, like just literally putting it on display up here. You might see it in the background in Formula One press conferences in the future. I'm gonna go and get it set up because I've got to get cracking uh, into this. This is, this is too fun to just sit here and talk about. Right, I'm just about to set this up. I've got to install it on the, on the PC make sure the software is lined up, which we're going to basically, we'll, we'll, we'll talk that through in a second. But before I do that, these are the T-Chrono paddles that I was talking about earlier. The ones that have the bounce rate of something like less, of less than like five milliseconds. It's less than five milliseconds, I checked it. So we'll just have a little look at these because these are a beautiful bit of kit. So you might have seen before, you might remember from before, the other ones to connect into here, but you just pop these in instead. Clutch paddles, gear paddles, super cool. So we are now going to get this all set up, get this set up, and then we can crack on with putting it to good use. So we're finally here, ready to go at Monza in the SF1000. I've got the wheel all set up, installed to a T-Series Thrustmaster base. That's what you need for the wheel add-on to work. Okay, the circuit is clear at the moment. We're good to go. Got Jeff in my ear there, just uh, holding things up. So I've thrown all the rubbish away behind me because I was absolutely raring to crack into this. So I'll talk you through it. Got my little switch here to flick on the, the, the wheel and I can change the setting on my dash with this rotary switch here. I quite like, this one is very basic and it matches the um, exactly what you'll be able to see in okay, real things. Oh, I wish you would just shut up. So there's no point in hanging around and doing anything other than uh, driving. So we should hit the track. We've got more than 20 buttons available to play with here, which is quite cool. And basically, the first thing I should probably tell you is that ob obviously there are a couple of the buttons here that don't correlate directly with what you would expect them to. For example, I don't have a drinks connected. I'm Kimi Raikkonen in the Hungarian Grand Prix. They haven't connected the drink. But I think as you hopefully saw there, I did activate and deactivate the pit lane speed button, which is the pit lane button on the top right. So that makes more that makes sense. Um, there are other elements as well that you can change that also make sense. For example, this switch here, as you can see, maps to the differential. So if I want it stronger, I turn it to the right. And if I want it weaker, I turn it back to the left. If I want to get the uh, car uh, or the engine setting information or health status, whatever you want to call it, I press the oil button. That also correlates somewhat, or it makes sense at least. It's intuitive. It's not, um, it's not nonsense. What is not, uh, it's not nonsense. What makes a little bit less sense is the neutral button is mapped as DRS. That I assume is because you'd use a paddle in real life and we do have the paddles on the back 
So I will do a test when we come out of Parabolica and see if either of those paddles are mapped. But I have a sneaking suspicion it's only this one. I could also use one of those paddles on the back, obviously, to manage the clutch. The uh, upper paddles, as you can see, I'm using for the, um, for the gear shift. So let's have a look. We'll have a look and see. Neither of them are mapped. So it is the neutral button for DRS. So but we can change that because you can go into the settings and you can actually um, play around and do to the wheel settings what you want. I'm going to move out of the way here. I've got a faster car approaching me, Curva Grande. Oh, George, that was... Uh, that was a bit tight. Nearly let out an Alex Albon style shriek there. But what else can I tell you about this wheel? As, uh, as I think I pointed out, more than 200, more than 200, more than 20 buttons. There is a lot to get used to. I would recommend having a couple of uh, plays just to get up to speed. You obviously, there's, um, there's a map as well that you can have a little look at, that, um, a diagram that shows you what each of the buttons stand for. Um, but one of the good ones as well that also maps up if I press the radio button. There we go. Uh, this is how I will be able to have my very annoying conversations with Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. So you press the radio button and then you've got a little D-pad here, which you can use to scroll through. So if I want a weather report. Ah, oh, thanks, Jeff. No. Lovely. Well, it's dry, Jeff, so that's not really much of a surprise, is it? So I explained the differential switch on the, uh, the, the, the bottom left. If I want to change the NG recovery mode, I play with this switch down here, left to go down, right to go up, nice and simple. And as I go into braking for the first chicane, maybe I felt like the brake bias wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. So I use this rotary switch here, click it down to move the brake bias backwards, flick it up to move the brake bias forwards. And as you can see, he's having a bit of fun on the in-game wheel as well. I have to say, actually using it, physically using it, once you've had a couple of goes to learn what the switches do, learn what the buttons do, learn where they are, it becomes very automatic, really intuitive. Um, so this rotary here is the, uh, is the fuel mix. On the left hand side here, you can see my left thumb now moving this one here. So if I go up, I increase the, the, the mixture. If I go down, I, I decrease it. So that is sort of, they're the basics. And as I said, you can change this one here. I like this, this one because it gives me the, um, the tire information, which is really, really useful. Um, but I can also appreciate that it's a little bit more complex. You don't want to be looking down all the time. So you can just flick it through to whatever one you want. This one makes um, quite a lot of sense to, uh, to, to, to use as a baseline, I think, um, because it is the simplest one. And again, it matches what you see on the screen. So what is a bit weird is that you have on the physical display here, You have the color change to, just to let you know what you're doing with the um, ERS setting. That can be a little bit um, confusing, but it's actually pretty simple. I think the, the confusion is that the, the, the color doesn't always match entirely with what you're seeing um, on screen, but you just have to get used to sort of the bits that um, your brain registers and, and, and what you need to do it. So we do have uh, an overtake button here, which look, immediately throws you into overtake mode. So that's cool, an actual overtake button. You don't have to go through the, um, the rotary switches to get there. Obviously I can then use the rotary switches to go back down, but just to show you that again. So I'll go down on the rotary switch on the, um, on the ERS mode button. And then as we go towards, uh, as we go down towards Ascari, if I want overtake, I've got overtake now. And you can see Delta in the top right of the screen flying down because we've got a load more straight line speed to play with. So overtake button is another one that is nicely mapped to the game.
I'm really looking forward to seeing how compatible everything is and how customizable everything is with different racing games as well, because that's where it comes in handy. It's these little switches here, the wheel switches that I find really, really useful. Just being able to play around with the brake bias um, is, is, is big. And obviously in this, in, in the F1 game, I really like controlling my fuel usage and controlling my um, ERS mode uses as well. So I like having that control. Um, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm the, the, the perfect target for something like this. And hopefully it's something that you'll be uh, interested in uh, as well. So in terms of actually physically feeling the wheel, because I was using the, an entry level wheel in my sim racing endeavors before. And one of the things that I didn't like was like, it's quite a, it's quite a small wheel. Uh, didn't give me, um, a, it gave a perfectly decent amount of uh, feedback. I wouldn't say it was like the most limiting factor in my exploits, um, but, it, but it was limited. And what I like about this is that through the base, you get like a really good consistent level of uh, force feedback. It allows you to feel the, the grip, feel the edge of the tire a little bit more, um, which, which I really like because you've got so many reduced inputs in a in a sim racing experience than you do in real life. And, and I did loads of karting and I've done a bit of car racing and various simulated bit, bits of simulator driving. So I know what I like and I know what I like to feel. Um, and I don't always get it um, for a basic wheel. With this I do, I get a little bit more of that sort of feedback that allows you to know when, when the tire is reaching the, the limit of the grip um, and also let you know when you're uh, locking the brakes or running out of grip and you can basically you get like a, a fraction of a second more warning than you did before and all of these inputs are really useful because then it just makes you drive a little better you start um, prevented mistakes rather than reacting to them so that's really good but then the other physical element of, of the wheel and using the wheel is how light it is I must admit like I think I said when I was unboxing it I was surprised by how um, First of all, how compact it is, how small it is, but it weighs nothing. The carbon fiber plating and the texture of rubber means it's really, really comfortable um, and really light. Um, and you've just, it's F1 2020. I know that this is um, a limited game from a sim racing point of view. I'm interested to see how it responds on different other games when I map it. But at the moment, I have to say, the, the, the smoothness of it all the way um, it feels in your hand and what you can feel in terms of uh, steering input and everything is, it's so nice. It feels really natural. Um, and I obviously like when you've got really expensive professional sim rigs and stuff like that, you do re recreate that. This is the, the first time I've ever been able to really feel this playing a video game. Um, so that's really cool. I think they've done a really good job with this. I, hand on heart, um, expected this to be more expensive. I think given it's a combination of a collector's item and a performance enhancing tool, I think it's, um, I think it's really good value for money. You're gonna lose hours if you do ever have a, a chance to, to try something like this. I've already lost hours to it. Um, and I'm having one of those, I can't believe this is my job moments because such a cool experience. Hats off to them for making something like this. I know they work really hard on it. Just calling us in. I think that's a good, uh, that's a good place to end. It's again, a good opportunity as well to um, put the, uh, the pit lane entry button into, into practice. I do have that all set to manual. So I guess all that's left for me to say as I enter the Parabolica is thanks ever so much for joining in. Thanks again for all your support on the Races YouTube channel so far we're really enjoying it we're pleased to be able to bring you something different this time if you enjoyed it if you want to see more videos like this let us know in the comments below uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the if you like the video you've seen today obviously subscribe if you want to see more in the future thanks very much i'm going to get back with jeff and debrief hope you liked seeing this i've loved bringing it to you and we'll see you again soon for another video